So, Andy, I understand that you took that program with Ken Schultz in his DSLR? That's right, yeah. I would love to hear all about it. How did you find it? What happened? What did you think about? And what have been the results? It all started with me looking around for a DSLR camera for the family, for holiday pictures and general pictures and stuff. I didn't know a lot about it. and I don't know how I came across it, but I found Ken's DSLR guide online and managed to download it. Had a look through the DSLRs on the guide and sort of picked a DSLR that we could kind of afford. I think I emailed Ken about it at one point as well and he emailed straight back, which was sort of really cool. I found that really helpful. What did you so email him about? What his thoughts were on the camera, obviously. He'd put it in the buyer's guide, but I just obviously, before shelling out that amount of money, I just wanted to sort of make sure I was making the right choice. Uh-huh. At which point I sort of followed up online to his website from his email address, which I think was the photography side, not the DSLR, mm-hmm. the DSLR course, mm-hmm. which then sort of got me onto the course. I ordered the DSLR and all that kind of stuff and didn't really know what I was doing with it and just assumed I would get good photos because it was a good camera. Mm -hmm. At which point I sort of thought, well, I'm investing all this money in a camera. Well, I want to sort of invest in some means of training to kind of get me through it. And I sort of had a look online and followed up on off Ken's email and uh, I found the course and looked across a couple of the introduction videos on his website, which were free, and just found personally that it just kind of was my learning mechanism. It was how I took things in, sort of looking at it on a video. I'm not the sort of person who can read a book or anything like that. I'm very hands-on, and to sit with my camera in front of a computer and watch a video of somebody showing you how it works, and, and in particular the camera that Ken showed you on was the one I had, which was really uh-huh. cool. It was just really easy application. You had it there, you had it in your hand as well. You could just dial up the settings and take some really practical examples. And I think that's what it's kind of based on, really. It's a practical kind of course, visually based. So that, that's how I learned. So I'm only about three quarters of the way through the course at the minute, but I've just found Ken's sort of dedication to the course just brilliant. It's great how he's got underneath every video, he's got a comment section. He personally responds to every single comment. I've emailed him aside from the, the course, just asking him advice on things, and he's emailed straight back. And He's just a really great guy and just really helpful. I just personally feel that without this kind of course that I'd done, had I just gone down the route of buying a DSLR and under the assumption that I would get good photos without this additional training, I wouldn't be in the place I am now having come back from Disneyland and got back to great photographs of the family, you know. So I've got a lot that I kind of feel I owe to, to Ken for that. And just really positive stuff, you know. Are there a couple of things that you've learned that stick in your mind, like, oh, wow, that was really useful or that made a difference? So many things. I mean, on the bottom of every video, I think I put a comment on there or a question and just saying how great that was and just how I'd never thought about it that way before. I would always thought about certain things a certain way and just how he explained it and referred to certain aspects of the camera and the settings that were just kind of, ah, oh, that's really simple, but I'd never thought about it that way before, if you see what I mean. Can you give me an example? Something up just aperture on the camera, just kind of how you utilize that. I understood the basics of it, but kind of in a depth of field side of things, trying to get better photography with a number on the aperture to kind of create a wider in-focus area on the screen, because I'd only done sort of half the course when we went away to Disneyland, and I found myself using, tending to mess about with the shutter speed a lot and not tending to touch the aperture setting. But then towards the back end of the course, I've kind of started messing about with the aperture and actually seeing the results of that. Do you have any pictures you're particularly proud of that you could share? Probably, given that I came back with 6,000. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Yeah, which Ken's also referred me on to a guy called Phil Steele, who does a course on Adobe Lightroom, which has also been really helpful to sort of work with your photographs because there's so many of them. It's uh, (laughs) it's a bit of a nightmare to try and filter them down to a manageable quantity. Very, very cool. Anything that I left out that you might want to tell people if they were considering taking Ken's course? Financially, you're spending in excess of £1,000 on a camera. You spend, what, £50, £60 on a course? I mean, that's really nothing compared to the results you get from using the camera. So if you buy the camera on its own and you don't do this course, I'm thinking of my example, if I just bought the camera and not done the course, I think I'd be in a very different position now to what I am having done the course and seeing all the rewards from that. And not just that, it's kind of the after sales, for want of a better phrase, with Ken. He's just, he's always at the end of an email. You've paid for the course, but there isn't a limit to that. It's a lifetime membership. I feel like I can always email him about something and he'll always email back a really helpful thing. It's kind of your own personal expert. Fantastic. <laughs> at the touch of a button which is brilliant. Fantastic. I just want to point out that Andy wasn't a terrible photographer. 
but he did have some issues with certain types of photographs and here's some examples like in this one um, the composition is not great and we have these foreground distracting objects and in this one uh, blurring just having issues with not knowing the settings and having blurred photos and here's an example of where the subject's way too dark and there's too much distracting sunlight coming in over the top of the subject and here's a good example of just not knowing about white balance and having a totally incorrect white balance and a few more examples here's shooting into the sun with not a great composition and you know just the glare just totally hiding the subject and another shot of just not understanding shutter speeds and having a blurred too much blur in the photo and finally just a shot with that's just way too overexposed so these are some of the examples that Andy was struggling with and having the knowledge these are the kinds of things that you can solve and you you won't be caught up having these problems anymore and I'd just like to lead into now some of the photos that Andy's really happy with and a lot of these were taken at Disneyland during his Disneyland trip and you can see uh, composition sharpness and lots of features of really good photographs so Andy's you know in fact Andy's becoming a professional photographer now he's, he has his own website that he's set up and plans to sell his images I just want to thank Andy again for being interviewed and just talking a little bit about the course and thank you for listening.